Dear sister, I hasten to give you a detail of what we have been doing since I last wrote. I have scarcely gotten my other letter mailed before we are ordered forward. We took the rebels' first line of works, halted, and went to fortifying and building breastworks, our brigade taking up position on the front line. June 23rd. Heavy cannonading all along the lines Hooks and Schofield advanced. On our right to the rebels worked above them a mile or so, halted, established his lines. The rebels massed their forces on him, tried to drive them back, but was repulsed three times. Hooker and Schofield still hold their position. Our skirmishers advanced at the same time with Hooker, but fell back to their rifle pits again. When Hooker started to advance, the forward call was sounded on the bugle. The whole line of skirmish advanced, taking great many rebel skirmishers, but no intending to make a charge, but Hooker and Schofield. The rest of the line only made a fate to draw their attention from Hooker, and the plan succeeded well. The regiment of our brigade for skirmishers lost 91 killed and wounded. June 24th. Scarcely any fighting on our part of the line. In the evening, our company and four others from our regiment were put on the skirmish line. Our loss that night in all of the companies was five wounded. June 25th. At four in the morning, we were relieved from the skirmish line and held as reserve skirmishers all day. Cannonading was heavy on our left. In the evening, we were relieved from the front and went back to the third line. June 26th. Scarcely any fighting along the line. Thirteen corps came up, moved to the right. We have eight corps here now, nearly 160,000 men. On, on the morning of June 27th, we were ordered to be ready to move at daylight. We were ready at about 7 o'clock. We were going over in front of Stanley's division to charge on the rebel works. Sure enough, when we got in his front, we were closed by a division at half distance on our first division. Our regiment was to take the advance on the 28 Kentucky in rear of us, 97 Ohio in the rear of them, and so on. One after another, the entire brigade was formed, then 57 Indiana. The rest of us were ordered to take off all our gun caps. General Harker's brigade was to make a charge on our right the same way the others on the right of him. If we succeeded on taking the works, the rest of the brigade was to deploy to our left. The regiment, being divided into five divisions, one behind another, our front line of battle being just the length of two companies, or about 30 yards, being the full length of our front line. When we were formed, we were some 200 yards from the works. We had to charge little after 8 o'clock. We were ordered forward. In an instant, we were across the ravine, which was between our lines. The air was thick with balls singing around us, over us. But on we went until we were well within a few rods of their works. They had a line of brush and sharp sticks fixed to stop us. Finding we were not firing any, and they would not be hurt much by firing, and staying at their works, there were two lines raised up, and took deliberate aim at us, and kept up such a ranking fire on us. Our boys, most of them having no caps in their guns, could not return fire, and then they were ordered not to fire. The line began to waver. And in two minutes, there was not another man standing up. Our whole regiment laid down rather than run back. The rebels kept pouring a tremendous fire on us from our front, right, and left flanks, so that if a man raised his head, he was sure to get killed or wounded. Presently, one of the general's orderlies came to the colonel, asked him if he could go any further. He told him he could not go without support on the right and left, for they were not pouring the flanking fire on us all the time. In a few seconds, another orderly told the colonel that Colonel Lane was coming up in his rear, would charge over us, then we were going to go on with him. I knew it was useless and that it would only add so many more to the number of killed and wounded. I was lying at the time behind a small tree about six inches through. The rebels had a battery of about 20 steps to my right, which they used all the time. I heard a noise in my rear and looked back. Their second line was coming up to charge over us. They came with courage and pride, but did not reach any of us before they laid down the same as we had. Another line came up. None got as far as I. On the right, first company with Henry rifles, 16 shooters, which were almost all wounded and killed. I knew we could not get any farther, 
and we had better get back best we could. The rebels had found out we were massing our forces there that morning, and they had done the same. Presently, they raised the yell on our right and left bounced over their works to take us prisoners by flanking us. Most of the boys grouped up and ran back into the ravine. Some of the officers hollered for the men to fall back. I raised up, seeing most of our boys running back. Just then a ball tore through my hat rim close to the crown and passed on after someone else. I laid down. I thought I would rather be taken prisoner than get up and run back through the shower of bullets. I laid there some five minutes. The rebels had taken some of our regiment prisoners and were falling back to their work. Our boys had commenced firing at them from the ravine, about a hundred yards from their works. From the ravine, the brush was all cut down, so it exposed our whole body to their fire, while they could shelter themselves all over by firing through under a log laid top of their works. I knew now was my time to get away, so I about faced. Looking back, our boys were nearly all back, but the dead and wounded and a few others were in the same notion and same fix as I was in. I crawled back, dragging my gun behind me. As luck would have it, I got back safe to the ravine. Our regiment had been ordered back to the works, so I went on back from the ravine to our works. The brush and timber had not been cut down, and it hid us from view of the enemy. I got back to the works, found our wounded, and carried them back to the hospital. There, I learned that Lieutenant Holb and Jasper Kolb had been wounded and sent back to the division hospital. The leaves caught fire on the field where all of our mortally wounded lay. A flag of truce was sent out. It was recognized and our wounded were saved from being burnt to death. The loss in the regiment is 106 killed, wounded, and missing. The loss in the brigade yesterday I haven't learned. General Harker, two captains, one lieutenant killed, we lost nearly one-third of our regiment. In the afternoon, we took up our old position. June 28th. Not much fighting along the lines. As reported while we were making the charges yesterday, our forces were crossing the river without much opposition, as they were occupied watching us. Although we were repulsed and badly cut up by cannonading tolerable heavy, we are not discouraged in this cause we are fighting for. This leaves me well, hoping it will find you all the same. Give my respects to all inquiring friends. Write soon and often. Will was well on the 14th of this month. Receive to yourselves my highest and best wishes from your brother, Brooke Stunley.